Dobrodošli u Tu One TV, novi podcast koji se bavi temama poput glazbe, duhovnosti, filozofijom i dobrim vibracijama. O ljudi, jeste li probali smudi? U ovoj epizodi Smuri Toka gost je Drago Plečko, hrvatski kemičar, promicatelj alternativne medicine i autor knjiga na temu bioenergije, zdravlja i joge. I'm so happy and pleased that we have Mr. Drago Plečko with us today in Smoothie Talk. I'm so honored because I remember myself when I was a kid and I was staring at the screen and watching Drago Plečko talk about pyramids, aliens, all this beautiful stuff that I was so interested in. And now, after all these years, uh, I'm so proud that I know you. I mean, I've, I'm just getting to know you and I'm happy that you you know, are here and you chose to dedicate your time to our smoothie the talk. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> it's so nice to have you here and I bet that people are going to love seeing you again on the screen. Um, so, to start off, I want to know who is Drago Plečko? When you look at yourself from inside or from wherever, whichever perspective, can you tell us who you are? Well, during your lifetime, <clears throat> you are mu actually multiple personality, you know. When you're growing, then you have all kinds of pressures from outside, all kinds of complex issues you can't resolve. The, the society is cruel sometimes, so when you develop, you develop certain problems inside the psychological life. Mm -hmm. Uh, same was with me. So then, after a while, you get used to it and you start fighting. In my case, it was quite extreme. I became really violent. I loved fights in the bars, the schools and everything. I was drinking a lot of booze. Mm -hmm. I was gambling a lot, stuff like that. And after a while, you grow and grow and grow. And I started to study chemistry. In Zagreb, I became a student and I, I graduated when I was 24. Then I continued to my scientific work, which was involving the chemistry of natural compounds, organic chemistry. I was quite passionate about this mm -hmm. research and then I made my master thesis. After that, I started my PhD in the medical university. It, actually, I wanted to prove that the we can affect uh, our immune system with our uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. That was the idea. So I wanted to warm this area with uh, thymus, mm -hmm. the gland, which is producing lymphocytes in the peripheral blood. Mm -hmm. And I was measuring the changes in the peripheral blood. Mm. And actually, in the very beginning, I proved that it works. Uh -huh. So it was quite exciting. It was 1980. And, but something happened, which actually is the only word for it is karma. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I, uh, uh, there was a lack of funds. Mm -hmm. for my PhD, because there was an economic crisis in Yugoslavia, so I quit. And I ended up in Boston, in MIT, 
So there was a professor there. His name was John Lewis. He was the head of the Department of Solar Chemistry. We uh, were friends because we was involved in the same system of meditation, basically. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that thing and uh, that I'm actually, uh, I wanted to finish my PhD. What happened to me, he said, it's not a problem. I will arrange that for you on MIT. So he called uh, his colleague, very famous organic chemist, born Swiss, who actually worked on, uh, on in MIT, and they uh, gave me a scholarship mm -hmm. for PhD. I went back home, I'm a single, and my father, who was quite old, he developed some health problems. And they told me that he has a, a stomach cancer, mm -hmm. which is lethal in almost 100% of cases. So actually I went to the doctor and he told me yeah, that there's no doubt about it and I was desperate, completely out of my mind. So I went to a yogi I knew in India and I told him how desperate I am and sad and I know I should accept that faith mm -hmm. and everything. And he said, be back tomorrow, come back. I was back the other day and he said like this, look, your father doesn't have a cancer. He has a benign tumor inside which there are some cells of cancer, but it will not spread. I was quite surprised, you know, it's an illiterate yogi. So I was back and I said to that surgeon, mm -hmm. the same story, he laughed, of course, he thought I'm a nut. And after the surgery, my father was walking in the hall in the hospital the other day. Unbelievable. Yeah. The man was 79. And he called me, the surgeon, and said, it's unbelievable, but you were right. Uh -huh. One about among 2,000 tumors are of that kind. It's very rare. Right. And so my father survived. Wow. Anyways, I couldn't traveled to Boston. I lost my, my scholarship. scholarship, but John called me back and I said, look, couldn't come and, and make uh, my PhD. And he said, no problem. I will arrange it again. Uh -huh. So he called me back and I said, you have a new scholarship. You can come wow. in order. Okay. Then after a couple of months, my father developed a new problem. That was a prostate. Uh -huh. So they said he has a prostate cancer, he's 80, it's very risky to um, operate on him and all that stuff and everything. I said, you have to operate on him, otherwise he will develop metastasis. It's even better that he dies on the table in, in right, the surgery right. than, than, than suffer yeah. so much. So my friend, uh, uh, with whom I went to school together, he operated on him. So he called me, said, look, it was not a, it was not a cancer. It was a benign. Again. Yeah, again, and well, he's doing fine. I come to the hospital, I see my father walking in the hall the other day, normally. Yeah. And I said, Jesus Christ, what's going on? I mean, it's an unbelievable story. So I've lost that again. scholarship again. <laughs> so what happens next? I met my today's wife, she got pregnant. Of course, I couldn't drag her with me to Boston to the small flat and to wait for me the whole day while I'm working mm -hmm. and all that, etc. And I lost that thing. And after a while, I realized it was meant to be. You know, mm -hmm. my path was uh, already predestined. I, I knew it at that point. Mm -hmm. First. Uh, that was uh, some kind of a disappointment. But then I, I saw it clearly, mm -hmm. what sh I should actually introduce to that country, which was communist at the time, although not too uh, tough mm -hmm. anyways, but I was the first man in communist countries that introduced this yoga, meditation, parapsychology and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was my mission in this life. 
the, I knew it at that point. So that was the beginning of my life. Mm -hmm. The second part was interesting, actually. It was, uh, I wrote a lot of articles. I talked on TV about it. I was traveling extensively. I've met all, everybody. I mean, Dalai Lama, we made friends. Then Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, a couple of times. Uh, then Punjaji, Papaji, famous. I've seen on YouTube some interview in his kitchen. I never knew they uh, were they filming were shooting. it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so somebody put it on YouTube now, and I have this. <laughs> I'm young, I have it and everything. So I've met all this is Shiva Balayogi, many mystics, many Nobel Prize winners like Brian Josephson, who was a really pheno phenomenal mm -hmm. and involved in this this stuff. And and the, there was Prayal of Vladimir, Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, Ilya Prigozhin, Nobel Prize winner in chemistry. I met all these people and then asked them the same question. It was a spiritual background of science. Mm -hmm. They were all prone to it. They loved these ideas. You know? They still do. Mm -hmm. Most of his top minds in the last century were uh, convinced that there was no uh, a way that the outer material world works without consciousness. The, uh, between our consciousness and the outer world as a connection. Mm -hmm. So they believe all of them, from Einstein to Bohr, Behme, uh, Richard Feynman, who is, his, who is my favorite, mm -hmm. and uh, many of them, Schrodinger, everybody believes that. So I was introducing this idea and uh, natural healing. I brought Ayurveda, First time, Unani, Siddha medicine, Tibetan medicine. I was a pioneer of these things and I started healing people and it worked quite well. Although the, there was a lot of resistance from the medical community initially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But after a while, it faded. Because I never uh, criticized medicine or science. I always said, go to the doctor first and then come here if they can't help you or whatever. So uh, so I've never criticized or attacked medicine. It's science. We should respect that. Right. So I, I actually never had any problems, real problems with the medical wow. community. Even some doctors came to me asking for help. Quite famous people, you know, mm -hmm. in medicine. And that was uh, that part of my life when I was introducing this stuff, trying to change the collective consciousness. I saw these wars and everything, all that hatred, all these racial problems. It existed in, when I was young. It was quite present. And I, of course, as every new ager, I was trying to change that. Anyways, later I... Uh, I was quite a bit irritated with uh, the, the the direction in which New Age went, mm -hmm. you know. So I became one man band, you know. I do not rely on anything except my own experiences. So I realized this is the third part of my life mm -hmm. that only my personal experience in meditation and everything counts. Mm -hmm. You know, you can write books, you can write articles, you can talk about teachings, uh, reading and telling quotes from famous people. It's mm -hmm. not that. Only if you experienced what you're talking about, then it's a real deal. For you or for a person? Well, it should talking. be like that for everyone. We have a lot of phony gurus. Mm -hmm. You know, not yogis, but bogies. Mm -hmm. You know, they're preaching. That's standard stuff. It's uh, taught in, a, in, in, in the schools in India, in theology, Indian theology. They're talking about uh, something original. Ultimately, when they uh, create names for themselves in the West, and then they start uh, sexually assaulted women around them, or 
stealing money, all that stuff. It yeah. ends up like that. There's Almost many movies always. now about like Osho and... Uh, oh yeah, in every cult is like that. I've seen them all, believe me. So initially I didn't want to write about it or talk about it too much, but nowadays everybody knows about it. Yeah. You know, so only few of them were really, 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 really original and, and honest people. Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi was one of them. Mm -hmm. And Shiva Bala Yogi also. They were real good teachers. But some, uh, they were bullshitting basically. You know, things you can talk. Right. And then I realized that this presentation of energetic chakras, you know, this seven, that you have um, these higher chakras, seven of them, which were not meant for healing, as people believe, but for spiritual development. Mm -hmm. So you have to activate Kundalini, mm -hmm. Shakti, in the first chakra, Muladhara chakra. And it has to flow up to the Sahasrana mm -hmm. chakra, to the uh, central channel, Sushumna Nadi. Mm -hmm. There are two channels, left and right. They almost look like a DNA molecule. One is Ida, the other one is Pingala. It, 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 the Kundalini moves to that wrong path, then you, you develop uh, terrible problems, mm -hmm. psychological and physical. So it's, uh, it, it has to be really, really strictly practiced in the way that you push this Kundalini up through Sushumna mm -hmm. uh, channel. What happens is that when you really do it, and you experience that yourself, you see that chakras are not placed in the same positions like uh, uh, you find in books. Mm -hmm. Modern people have a different positions of chakras, locations. Uh -huh. And suddenly you see, look, I'm feeling that energy inside. Is somewhere between my navel and my back, uh, and in, in the mid, mid middle uh, mm -hmm. uh, of know? the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And then from there, that bliss is coming, and you feel that bliss in every cell of your body. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what's happening because it's not written anywhere. Mm -hmm. That happened to me, and then uh, I was reading and talking about tantric techniques connected to sex. Mm -hmm. So you have genital, cellular and cosmic orgasm, mm -hmm. theoretically. Okay, this reminded me of that description of this cellular organ, orgasm. So you feel it in every, every cell. cell of your body. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from that point, but that point is not mentioned in yoga. You have Swadishtan Chakra and you have this other one, Manipura. So it's, it's neither of them. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in, the, in That's between. That's right. In between, somewhere. So it was strange. So I kept on feeling these things. I mean, it was real, you know, sensation bodily. So mm -hmm. I could activate it within 30 seconds. Oh. Anytime. I still can. So what happens is I tried to study things, nobody wrote about it in that way, because this is only modern man's right. uh, chakra position, new one. And then you have, of course, the lower chakras, which you can affect mm, to heal the body. The main one are here in the center of the palm, mm -hmm. and they are very powerful. Therefore, all healers are using, hands. using their hands, uh, laying, the hands or the waving around the body with the hands. Even the uh, public speakers, politicians are using that. You know, it's because of this most powerful lower chakra. Mm -hmm. Then you have some other ones here in your knees and you affect them with some treatments and you can improve the health. Mm -hmm. But anyways, this, these other ones are different. So I am completely sure that when it starts, uh, uh, it's the beginning of that path. So suddenly you develop conscious dreams. Mm -hmm. You are completely aware of your dreams. Mm -hmm. You know it's you. Mm -hmm. And in your, in, in your dream, you see yourself in front of you, 
you copy. Right. What you should do is to concentrate on your eyes in uh -huh. front of you. Uh -huh. That's the thing you have to do and it happens. Okay. It's the next step. Then you suddenly feel colors in your body as a bodily sensation. Mm -hmm. You watch the color, for example, uh, uh, very strong colors like uh, red or mm -hmm. like blue. They are on the uh, they are uh, at the end of the spectra. Right. Mm -hmm. Both of them. So you you see them. Uh, you see them, and suddenly the train of thoughts is coming. Million of thoughts in one second that is reminding you on the situations when you are exposed to that color. Oh, wow. It's a very strange happening. Like all your neurons inside your brain that ever contacted the, that the color are activated. Wow. At once. At once. And the next thing that happens is that you feel the color inside your body as a bodily sensation. You can taste the color. Wow. Colors have taste, all of them. So, what happens is that you realize that you are completely interconnected with the outer world. These are outer world things are inside you, all of it. Mm -hmm. All this is projection of your uh, your inner world. world and you are the projection of the outer world. It's a holographic relation. We are living in a hologram. There's no doubt about it. So when I experienced that, all that, then some other things happened. Uh, you see, not always, but sometimes, when you are relaxed, suddenly you see that everything around you is made of the same stuff like your consciousness. It's a very strange feeling, you know. Sometimes you think you're losing it. It's mm -hmm. like a, almost like a, on the brink of the madness. Mm -hmm. But it still happens. So I, I uh, went through this whole thing and I knew that's the what they are describing. Cosmic consciousness, when you start being aware of your dreams, when you see this phenomenon that everything around you is made of your consciousness is a God's, God consciousness, but you can't keep it for long. It's a phony story in books. When you enter that situation, you can't function normally outside. Mm -hmm. You know, you're absorbed into it because it's an ecstatic feeling. It's a, it's a bliss, bliss consciousness that you develop. It's, it's, it absorbs you so much that you can't function Function normal. physically. Yeah, right. physically. So you, you have to be back in a normal state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That was happening to me. So I realized things are a little bit different than in books and popular literature. Mm -hmm. So also I realized only few people will understand that because uh, people are attracted by this outer stuff, you know, let's... The guru looks great, you know. Yeah, yeah. He has that arrogant attitude, so he's humiliating you constantly. This is a psychological trick mm -hmm. that you are aware that he's so great and you're so uh, so so small and uh, this is a bullshit, you know. Mm -hmm. When you know the story, so uh, that is actually, in my opinion, this is the 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 meaning and the goal of the evolution spiritual evolution of course material evolution is something different mm -hmm. your body goes its way and it ends up the story but you get that chance to realize these higher truths <sighs> you know that's uh, uh, there are many phenomena you develop for example what you are aware of this is the most actually maybe the most shocking mundane Mm -hmm. effect uh, when people are attacking you mm -hmm. or bullying you or whatever verbally then you realize at one point that your gurus the uh, doing your favor because you talk 
to yourself through them. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's like you can't accept certain things because of your ego, but your unconscious part of yourself, subconscious, mm -hmm. is organizing things in the outer world so that somebody who is telling you the bad news is actually your best friend. He is not aware of it. You know? Mm -hmm. He's like a... Channeling. Channeling yourself. Right. So you should listen to, to what they are talking about and how they are offending you and you should hear that this is your projection. Mm -hmm. That's something you are afraid of in yourself. So you can't uh, look in the eyes of the problem inside your soul. Right. So it, comes uh, it happens from outside. With the help. That's right. With everybody around you. Mm -hmm. Which means this is not easy to get along with this idea and but if you apply it in your daily life mm -hmm. every day then you see it clearly that somebody that told you something bad actually warned you about things that, that are wrong in your life that don't function mm -hmm. so there's one of these uh, effects you see when you are developing that uh, direction also you are losing interest for any recognitions, uh, I don't know, uh, awards and everything. You so see, what is happening with ego at that point? Ego has to live. Uh -huh. uh, this uh, uh, classical uh, story about destroying the ego and everything, who has no ego is schizophrenic or dead. Okay, ego doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you are not the slave of it, mm -hmm. ego is just one thought, you know. But if you are controlled by this one thought and you are entering uncontrollable uh, states of mind which are inspired by, by the impulse of ego, then you're, then you're in trouble. Right. E ego has to live. Mm -hmm. Uh, ego has to remind itself it's alive through the conflict mm -hmm. that keeps him alive. You know, he's happy. You know, if you're uh, uh, all kinds of conflicts because right. he does exist at that point and you rely on him. Mm -hmm. You believe you can solve every problem with the strength of your intellect and ego, which is, of course, uh, it's wrong. It's uh, not true. But anyways, it's keeping. So what if you learn to think slower? Mm -hmm. You know, the thoughts have certain speed and there are certain spaces between two thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you expand that space in between two thoughts, you know, you become aware of that gap. Mm -hmm. That gap is the truth mm -hmm. about you. This is the ground state of consciousness actually so when you see it and it's slowing down these thoughts what happens is that you are do not react according the ego's desires right you understand mm -hmm. you do not think too fast and accept the orders from ego you know there's no no use it's like awareness it's like that's right it's pending over awareness but it's a plastic uh, presentation, sort of, you know, that you see. So the, these, these gaps are essentially important. You In Buddhism, it's a funny thing. Once a Buddha monk, Buddhist monk, told me, I asked him about this gap between thoughts. This is the point of every meditation and everything. Samadhi, Satori, enlightenment, whatever. Mm -hmm. I said... What is, what is the, <laughs> what is, how, how long does it last, this gap? Right. <laughs> Seconds or whatever. And she said, take a heap of uh, palm leaves mm -hmm. and a machete. Mm -hmm. When you cut them, the time that passed, uh, 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 that uh, machete went between two leaves 
is the time, the gap between two thoughts. Ah. That was a Buddhist uh, <laughs> explanation. Answer. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, we can't calculate it. Although in Vedas there are many, many, uh, that, uh, the phenomenon of time mm -hmm. is recognized in Vedas and in science, of course, uh, the major one. Even some teachings in Upanishads say that the thoughts are time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they are identical to time. There are many philosophical, philosophical mm -hmm. expressions, but you know what? After a while you see that uh, uh, some things are elegant, like mathemat mathematicians say, you like it, you enjoy it, how intelligent it is. The, but there's no real use of it if you do not enter the state of mind, that state of consciousness. To experience so, it. Yeah, you have to experience it, otherwise it's just elegant and nice. Right. But it's passing away, it's going away, it's walking away. It's time to jam a little music. Glazbeni gost danas u Time to Jam je Christopher Scott Pullin, američki skladatelj i glazbenik iz Američke savezne države Maine. Gitara mu je glavni instrument, no svira i flautu, i ukulele, i bas gitaru, i klavir, i usnu harmoniku. He was an old lady, he was a cold night. Beneath the glow of the moon and the candlelight My hand he held the trumpet refrain I thought about you again and again And melodies drift through the evening air And waltz into the heart of ease Without a care, the shadow of his smile Wakes my memories of how I fell for you and you fell for me This familiar feeling That rocks up my spine The ease of how we fit so naturally The music takes us back to another time He took my breath and I stole a kiss Rabbit that I remember what I had missed it's been a long time, whispered my whole flame We danced and swayed to the trumpet's refrain Oh
was a flame, it was a cold night Neath the glow of the moon and the candlelight My hand he held the trumpet's refrain I thought about you again and again And melodies drift through the evening air And waltz into the harmonies without a care the shadow of your smile wakes my memories of how I fell for you and you fell for me. This familiar feeling that runs up my spine, the ease of how we fit so naturally, the music takes us back to another time. He took my breath and I stole a kiss Round midnight I remember what I had missed It's been a long time, whispered my whole flame We danced and swayed to the trumpet's refrain Oh yeah So do you think this is all a part of a destiny or a plan? Look. Pre predetermined. Evolution is kind of plan. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, yes. Uh, I believe, of course, there's some intelligent design behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too complex, too perfect uh, to be uh, uh, accidental. Man made or accidental. No, this and that. Uh, but anyways, uh, whatever... Uh, uh, we ha we whatever we have outside. Mm -hmm. Once we will be in the possession of that power, that is another very very good example. Uh, uh, you know that the thread of the spider is the strongest uh, material in the world. It can spider stand the, yes, and uh, uh, one guy realized with which gene in the spider is producing it. Mm -hmm. So he extracted the gene and he, he, he injected it in the goats. Okay. Okay. So the goats gave milk. Mm -hmm. So he reduced the milk completely down and he got a thread of the same material as the spider. in the spiders. Wow. But 10 times stronger. Uh -huh. You understand? And almost everything is possible. Everything you can imagine is possible. Mm -hmm. So all that is coming from the same source, which is called consciousness. But we still, our uh, brains are still on the level of 2 to 5.5% of activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So evolution is happening. Uh, we can even even certain... faster than I ever I bl I have well, perception. Well, if we will speed it up like that, mm -hmm. oh yeah, of course you can, you can actually make a step of uh, ten million years in one generation. Everything is possible, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's the question of, of 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 the price. We have to pay for it. That's another There's story. That's, that's another story. It's always uh, sometimes disturbing of the balance and everything. Today you have the cats that are shining, for example. There's a chemical called luciferin inside those small bugs and they produce light. They pick the Distracted. gene of that, yeah. inject the uh, cat. If the cat is born shining. Oh, It's wow. in a green light. So you want to say it's funny to see the cat walking around, uh, it's shining like a lamp. Wow. There are many experiments already done that are proven. Yeah, like you said, so far, also, it, it goes along with everything so far. Like, also, if you misuse or abuse the knowledge and the power, it, it can't 
turned good. Like the yogis that are, you know, just these so-called gurus that are abusing. Oh yeah, that's different. So that's, it's in all of it, it's like kind of a balance. But it has to be like that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is uh, um, uh, evolution? It's not based of positive uh, mm -hmm. attitude. It's a negative. Right. It violence, pushes, pushes to... Violence, destruction. Right. You know, and you, you know, sir, in uh, Switzerland, uh, this Hadron Collider, 27 kilometers yeah. of the tube and everything. What is in front of CERN? Stature of four meters. Of whom? Shiva. Oh. The god of destruction. You understand? Wow. This is Shiva's dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, outer world is based... Uh, there are always... The winners are always the people that are stronger, mm -hmm. not more honest, not good, not not beautiful, not not anything uh, stronger. Mm -hmm. You understand? So sooner or later they collapse and everything. But anyways, negative power is the one dragging the evolution forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More stronger species are destroying well, the weaker ones. The weak ones. That's right. And this world is controlled by this negative power. And it's endless. Because your knowledge is spreading and the curve is going like this. There are more and more and more and more knowledge about finer state, uh, states of matter, subatomic particles, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so it's going like this. It's endless. Mm -hmm. The spirituality... It's going backwards towards the source. You want to know who you are. Yeah. So you are not going forward, but backward right. to the source. And that is sometimes a problem to live in this life <laughs> like an animal and be spiritual like a guru. So uh, what would you advise? What, what are the, in, except from the meditation that you say you do, you do daily, what, what are the things that you do daily that you think are essential for you to become more aware and to realize all of this that you're talking about? I developed this practice. Uh, uh, you know, most of the teachings you find in yoga and Vedas and all this classical stuff, Sufi teachings, everything, you know, Tibetan teachings, Western occult teachings, particularly in the beginning of the 20th century in Vienna, you have that occult circle which was very developed, surprisingly. And uh, uh, the problem is, you should just be normal. So it's normal that you uh, enrage to eat something. Yeah. What does it mean, normal? It means that you, you may be uh, uh, enraged by something, be pissed off. It's normal. I've, every yogi I've ever seen was sometimes pissed, pissed off. So you should be normal. It does mean that you lose your emotions. Right. You should love. You should love. You you should love your your parents. You should love your children. You should love your husband and everything. You can't love everybody in the world. It's a, it's a, just a phrase. Mm -hmm. You know, farther the people that are from you, less is your emotion from their problems. You can advocate the rights of the people. You can advocate anything, but sincerely inside you, you don't feel that love. It's a evolutionary stuff. Mm -hmm. you, if you would love everybody in the world, you would be wasted in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. You know, you're emotionally right. exhausted. So you should be normal person. There's there's no there's nothing else there. So thought is coming after thought after thought and so on. When you practice these few exercises that are necessary. From conscious walking, but not uh, according uh, present teachings. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a specific type of it that you can activate both uh, of your brain hemispheres. Mm -hmm. Then you have that that exercise, simple one, through your nose. You breathe in and you feel that breath all the way down to this level. Mm -hmm. It's made in a particular way, two times five minutes a day. Then you have a relaxing exercises, something like autogenic training, Jackson, so relaxation method, uh, Nidra yoga, there are many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you use that one simply five minutes a day. 
is enough and it's simple mm -hmm. but you have to practice without expecting the fruits of your practice you understand yeah when you wake up you wash your teeth automatically you don't think about what benefit will come from uh, you, you washing your teeth mm -hmm. you should practice in the same way mm -hmm. do not expect results or fruits of your effort this is it's written in Bhagavad Gita it's written everywhere so when you lose this uh, this automatic uh, reflex of expectation mm -hmm. you're in immediately if you yeah. could get rid of it now you in within seconds you would enter that state that state if it lasts longer during your day day uh, daily uh, activities mm -hmm. you feel it mm -hmm. it's like a pleasant trance mm -hmm. and uh, and it it's described like samyama in yoga approximately mm -hmm. you know because uh, there are uh, many ma people are discussing that for centuries what patanjali meant when describing the state of samyama you know the easy the, the, the is the translation accurate isn't it does it mean this or that ultimately they came up even with the idea that he's describing a snake that huge snake which is everywhere in the bible you know snake plays a plays a main role mm -hmm. you have it in yoga uh, the kundalini, kundalini is described like a serpent, serpent energy. Yeah. and then you have it at uroboros you know in in south america you have a lot of symbolism connected to the snake and it it's possible that it's true but we don't know that and uh, when you enter that state you i experience that as some kind of omni relaxed omnipresence Mm -hmm. you know but anyways if something happens in the outer world somebody calls me said my grandson has a fever i would run to help him right you understand so yes. so you, you should be normal that's really really difficult to be just normal mm -hmm. you understand do not harm others of course do right. not harm animals do not harm people if you don't have to you know, if you defend yourself, nobody will tell you, no. There was a famous story. Don't turn the other cheek. <laughs> Don't turn the other cheek. Because what happens, uh, once I was with Darshan Singh, Sun Darshan Singh, he's a Sikh guru. He was a very powerful man, so loving and wonderful person, really, really a saint. And all his disciples were fanatical vegetarians. Mm -hmm. absolutely fanatical if you have a dish uh, you cooked meat in it they would never eat the food from that dish it was absurd in a way at one point I was staying in that ashram I, I loved provoking people everybody I, I, was, I was joking with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi provoking him Punjaji in particular he, he loved that humor <laughs> And, uh, and all that I like to provoke so I said to one of these disciples that I've heard that the last guru Hazur Baba Savan Singh allowed one of his disciples to eat meat Jesus Christ it was a havoc in the whole ashram everybody knew what I said in the evening nobody talked to me and we were sitting around Sandarshan Singh uh -huh. And of course, the guy from Colombia, whom I called Swami Kokananda, he was pissed with me. You know, he was from Colombia. So I called him Swami Kokananda. And uh, he was so pissed with me. And he said to the guru, you know, this guy from Croatia, he said that Hazur allowed one of his disciples to eat meat. So Santasha was a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. He didn't know the story, but I did. She said, well, I don't believe that, but what did you mean by that? He asked me. He was a smart fellow. He right, knew that, right. that there was a, some trick kind of a trick. trick. 
And uh, I said, look, Hazur had a very, very dear disciple who was fighting in the north, frozen, everything around him, minus 40 degrees. They are freezing, there's no plants, nothing there but the cans with meat. So he said to Hazur, look, I have to go there to fight. And uh, there are two possibilities. Either I eat meat or I die of starvation. Hazur said, eat meat. Oh, smart enough, Jesus. Why yeah, would you, you yeah. die? It's unnecessary. And I said the story. Mm -hmm. There was a silence in the hall. The Sandarshan said, yeah, it's possible. I would say the same things to the guy. So I said to this fellow, from, look, was I lying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they were quite confused. So this fanaticism yeah. is not necessary. It can harm, yeah. No. If you feel like not eating meat, don't eat it. Right. If you feel, if you, feel you need it, you eat. love it, eat it. Your system will give you a sign. Mm -hmm what is good and what's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Your body has its own mind, subconscious. Where when you are asleep, your heart works, your intestine works, your liver works, You everything. breathe, your and lungs, you, everything. Yeah, and you're not aware of it. So there's some computer inside that is controlling it. You know, we forgot to, to talk about it. And in the end, I should add something. You mm -hmm. asked me about the music. Yeah. You are, my favorite singer. No, no. <laughs> You're a true oh. star. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm ashamed I'm even flattered. talk about music. No, you know, I was in thinking, front of you. No, I was thinking more about the healing pr prospects yes, of but music. You are, I mean, you are <laughs> oh, I'm so good. You understand? Oh. <laughs> you are a true jazz star. Thank you. I'm just Thank a fan, that's all. Coming from you, this is like... Yeah, uh, I'm just a fan. You're my, I was your fan for... I'm still your fan. So to come, for that to come from you, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I'm blessed. I've see seen, people like... I've seen you sing and this is a miracle. <laughs> this is really awesome. No, I believe that music really can help people oh, on a regular yeah. basis. Of course. You if, have music therapy, you have all kinds of... It's unbelievable. If people involve themselves actively in just listening to music or participating in music, sure. I think they the can, rhythm. Okay, I, they can find the bliss. Yeah, I they can enter believe. the 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 ecstatic state by exactly. the, the rhythmic uh, dancing. Like trance. Way. It was yeah. uh, famous in voodoo. Mm -hmm. You know, there was the, 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 there was special drummers mm -hmm. that knew these parts how to play. Was many many years ago uh, that state. Uh, existed in Africa, Dahomey. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It uh, uh, now it, it's together with Togo or something. Uh -huh. And there was a Voodoo priest from there. So I talked to him extensively. Mm -hmm. He was a very educated guy. Mm -hmm. He was a head priest there and everything because they consider Voodoo not mm -hmm. magic as we do, but as religion. Right. It contains a significant amount of uh, uh, Christian symbolism mm -hmm. also. So he said to me, you know, it's about this rhythm, you know, and gradually, gradually enter this trance, mm -hmm. in which you can see things. It's funny, there's a tribe in Botswana. Mm -hmm. People live in a desert, Kalahari Desert. Okay. They describe Kundalini rising in details. And the, the funniest thing is they call it Kung that energy. Right. And they are dancing, during dancing they experience, Rising. it's a, absolutely accurate. How describe it, this tribe. Mm -hmm. How they call it, that state of mind, that bu is bugging me for years already. Ne um. Ne um, mm -hmm. which means no mind right. in Croatian language. Wow. En um. <laughs> And it's clear. I said, Jesus, how is that possible? Yeah. The tribe on the south of Africa, Kalahari Desert, they wow. use the same words as we do in Croatian language. Right. The, uh, you know, the, the, there's no end to secrets. No, no. It's like no end. It's like ever evolving. And 
But it just shows that we are so connected and inter interrelated. With everything, basically. Everything. You know, yeah. I found it everywhere. So it's, you know, what I advocate, basically, you should read about it for fun. I mean, I mm -hmm. enjoy reading about aliens and watching History Channel and mm -hmm. enjoy these stories about pyramids and all that. It's fun, you know. It's fun, it But is. you should go for the experience. Mm -hmm. You should develop your consciousness mm -hmm. as much as you can. This is your duty when you live in this world. You know, that's, that's it. And uh, you cannot be a good man if you're unhappy. Mm -hmm. You know, only happy people can be good. Mm -hmm. You know, when I listen to these people, they're coming to me and they say, you know, I suffer a lot and I suffer for people, other people, because I love them. No, that's not true. No. You, you have to make yourself happy to be a good person to other people. Then you have plenty of love for others. First, love yourself. Yeah. You know, and th this is the major trap in the world. Mm -hmm. you, you fail in something. Failure is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you understand his message, you will try again, 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 again. Every Nobel Prize winner will try endlessly again. Yeah. If you see it as a punishment, you're done. Yeah. Your development is over. So uh, failure can be a teacher. Be happy because then you will love others. Mm -hmm. First, you be happy. Experience these states of consciousness. Understand the nature of the world around you as far as you can. Right. You not, will never all, understand yeah. everything, you know. But as far as you can do it. Well, it's it's it's, it's the end of the story. Yeah. I could tell you all these meetings with all these great gurus, and then I see Punjaji, Papaji. He was full of fun. Mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I was making a fool of him. I mean, but, but jokes. He died of laughing. His <laughs> tears were rolling down his cheeks when I was telling him stories. So now I see the gurus that claim they are his disciples. They are hugging the pillows he was touching. Mm -hmm. If he would see that, I, I guarantee it, he would kick their asses. He hated idolatry. Mm -hmm. I still remember the situations where some girls you know, be kneeling in front of him. I still remember a Lithuanian girl. Oh, Papa G, I feel energy that oh, she started crying and he said, you don't feel well? You have a problem? Uh, and he says, should we call a doctor? <laughs> you want to go to the emergency room? The emergency room? You're making fool of these uh, you know, pretenders. Pretentiousness. You know, yeah. So, so, yeah, I've seen him. I knew him well. So when I hear now mm -hmm. claims about him, Jesus Christ. It's far they, from. I mean, look, he was obsessed with sex. Everybody knew that all his life. Mm -hmm. And I told him that openly during an interview. There were time. 2,000 people, and he said, that was great. I mean, that, that was great. He said, well, what is sex in the comparison with enlightenment? <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard better excuse <laughs> than this one. I had to laugh. It was great. It was a great. I, Jesus, I said, you're good. <laughs> he never said the, the lies don't listen to him. He knew we know. Right, right. right. <laughs> so he said, what is it? You know, he was yes, honest. It's nothing. Okay. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you meet all these people. Uh, I right. spent uh, quite some time with Maharishi Mahashogi. But we were alone. Mm -hmm. He told me things that are not written anywhere. Uh -huh. But how he judged that. If I told him, I experienced this or that, not clear to me. He explained that to me and said, what else you can expect? But if you did not uh -huh. have the experience, he wouldn't talk about it ahead. Right. Until you were ready. Yeah, he was brilliant. Uh, if I have to pick the most brilliant person I have ever met in the spiritual world, that's Maharishi Mahesh Undoubtedly. 
He had all these exponential sensors. He led this uh, fantastic, I mean, uh, uh, legacy is fantastic. You know, the whole structure of the Vedas you, you, you find in the human body in physiology. Mm. Now, with Tony Nader and all these people around him, the scientists from MIT, they developed this system explaining all it and so on. Everybody has his favorite, you know. Absolutely. That's normal. I've spent a long time with Tibetan Lamas too. You know, it's like Geshe Rapten was my guru. He was a junior guru to tutor of Dalai Lama. Oh, wow. So Dalai Lama told me openly, he said, like, you know, I, I don't have many spiritual experiences. You need someone who is involved in meditation. I have a guru for that. So he... Wow. Yeah, he yeah, even... yeah. Yeah. Geshe Rapten was his name. Uh, Anwin brothers or whatever they're called they published his biography in America mm -hmm. he was quite famous guy he was a good man you know he was but this uh, Tibetan Buddhism he was likable the, the whole thing was likable mm -hmm. but not perfectly fit for the uh, European mind uh -huh. not not a lot More of so folklore cool. you have to you get used to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of folklore, you know, you have to accept divinities and, and, and I don't know, angel, whatever, and these deities, uh, which are not... For you, it's art. It's, uh, it's wonderful to see them, mm -hmm. but you, you don't feel they are divine. Right. You understand? You, you can't accept that. That good. It takes you some time. Mm -hmm. To accept it, and then you visualize that, and everything it gives you some definitely some experiences. But anyways, it's it takes some time to adjust to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, although I appreciate them a lot, I mean, it's undoubtedly. In, even uh, Dalai Lama recorded his, uh, his first CD just recently. Did you know that? I've heard of that. <laughs> I can't I mean, wait to hear. I, it. I met him in 1979, <laughs> January. It was funny. Well, I, I've never said that before. We, we, I'm saying that now for the first, first time. Uh -huh. I said, look, when you were young and so on, you became Dalai Lama. Did you ever watch these girls around and get some ideas? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And he wasn't... He did not react uh, uh, as I expected. Mm -hmm. Like, no. Mm -hmm. He was quiet and said, oh, a thousand times. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he was young, of course. He, yeah. was, a, he was a man. Jesus. Of he course. still is. But yeah. his heart is so full of love. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful man. Yeah. A wonderful man. Yeah. I love it so much, him. I mean, he is wonderful. But he was so honest. Yeah. He never lies. Whatever I asked him, he told me the truth, although he, nobody would, would like to hear the truth. Right, All right. these fanatics and everything. Yeah. But he said it to me. That's oh, beautiful. You get a better picture of the world when you meet all these people, you know. Yeah, and it gives you, doesn't it give you more motivation to do be a better person yourself? Yeah, it's uh, wonderful. For example, once I wrote a mail to uh, David Deutsch. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, head of the Department of Physics on Oxford. Okay. I, uh, it, I was sure that he wouldn't answer. Mm -hmm. I described some spiritual experience of mine. I thought it's future. And I, what I observed in that trance was two moons on the, on, in the sky. In the sky. Exactly, two. I said it's impossible. You know, it's physically impossible. So he, it bugged me a little bit. I wrote him a mail and he answered. And what? he said, I don't know what you experienced, but if we would be able to travel in time physically, it would take us so much energy that even the whole matter of this solar system wouldn't be enough. Uh, practically it's impossible. But in the case we do, mm -hmm. In the future, all the uh, things would be duplicated. Oh, wow. Yes, that. It was many years ago. 
So, the, you know, you're surprised sometimes. This really, really high-ranking scientist answer on these uh, questions like that. I was writing to Robert Lanza, who's my favorite author, his biocentrism mm -hmm. book. That's great. Everybody should read it. Mm -hmm. So I exchanged a couple of mails with him, although he's a brilliant uh, author. I would sign every word he wrote. But he's not in a, in a practical sense, you know. He, he doesn't practice something. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he just realizes things. Right. Well, he's that powerful intellect and everything. He saw it all coming together, everything. So it's great. Although, of course, it cannot be extremely popular because it's, it's too smart. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, only if... Yeah, only if those people that understand people, exactly. what he's referring to, they can... Dig. Really appreciate it, you know. You, you, yeah, it's uh, many authors. I like these authors that are uh, Michio Kaku. Mm -hmm. He's an excellent Jesus. He's very popular. He also top physicist. Mm -hmm. You know, all these people. It's it's uh, it's unbelievable when you you write that uh, some physicists like Schrödinger or some of these great ones. Uh, they said, for example, that the the time can flow backwards mm -hmm. or that uh, there's no time it's an illusion mm -hmm. if we observe an atom every part of it continually with our consciousness it cannot change when mind stops the physical processes stop mm -hmm. some of them told that openly when, when you write it immediately a little bit lower level physicists jump and you know criticize it and everything so these great minds dare to say what they think the other ones uh, are worried about their personal careers more than right about, you know it's so, in, in every field is like that every field is like that i know that so you should go for those great ones you know yeah that's what i'm trying to do <laughs> yeah, it's okay so thank you so much for being our guest. It was a pleasure. Daily Zen. U današnjoj rubrici Daily Zen tema nam je hodanje, jedna od najjednostavnijih fizičkih aktivnosti čije dobrobiti često znamo pocijeniti. Prohodate li svaki dan samo 800 metara više, u vašem će se tijelu dogoditi znatne promjene odlične za vaše zdravlje. Da biste uspješno kontrolirali tijelesnu težinu i održavali zdravlje, dnevno biste trebali prohodati oko 10.000 koraka. Pa ponovimo, ako redovito hodate, srce će se manje naprezati, smanjuje se rizik od moždanog udara, lakše ćete smršaviti, poboljšati ćete razinu kolesterola, manje ćete biti pod stresom, a kosti će vam ojačati. Idemo! 